Welcome back to Fabric School, the series where I, a textile technologist, tell you how fabrics are actually made. Today, I want to talk to you about filament yarn and staple fiber yarn. So first of all, staple fiber yarn, what is it? Staple fiber yarn is cotton yarn, for example. It is a yarn made up of a bunch of short fibers. You need a ton of those short fibers right next to each other to make sure that it doesn't pull apart. It also needs to be twisted so it doesn't come apart same reason then filament yarn is made up of a bunch of super long fibers which are referred to as filaments and therefore it is a little bit stronger so same thickness will be stronger than the staple fiber yarn filament yarn can be made out of three things either silk the only all-natural filament that we have um full synthetic such as polyester or regenerative fibers such as cellulose from uh, trees or bamboo that you through a chemical process then turn into super super long fibers as well that would be for example viscose or lyocell would fall under that category now once you have created your synthetic filaments sometimes you actually chop them up into short fibers to make staple fiber yarn with it why very often times it is because you mix it with another staple fiber so you mix it together with cotton and then you have to have it at the same length as cotton to be able to process it all welcome back to fabric school the series where i a textile technologist tell you how fabrics are actually made in today's video i'm going to be talking about how fibers are turned into yarn with that yarn you can later weave knit warp knit different fabrics. I'm going to be talking about what on earth all those things mean in later videos today. How do you get short fibers, kind of like that, into yarn? Meaning, how do you get staple fiber yarn? Staple fibers are just shorter fibers. The most common example for this is cotton yarn, so I'm going to just continue talking about cotton fibers. Step number one, you're going to get your cotton delivered in huge bales. Then the next thing you're going to be doing is you're kind of going to try to loosen up the cotton and get smaller and smaller pieces while also cleaning the cotton. There could be all sorts of stuff in there. You need to clean all of that out. Then you're going to get all of those fibers as parallel as possible. You can possibly comb out the shortest fibers to make a higher quality yarn. You do not have to. Then you're going to create an equally thick band um, making sure that all the fibers are as parallel as possible. And then lastly, you're going to spin it into yarn. Essentially, what you're doing is you're going to pull it as thin as possible while also twisting it a little bit to make sure that all those fibers stay together and they don't just fall apart. And in the very, very first step, you're going to be getting your cotton in very huge bales. You're going to line all of them up in one row. And then you're going to have a machine which is going to go over the top of those cotton bales and it's essentially going to shave off like small little balls of cotton small little pieces it's going to do that with wheels that are turning and that are just picking up little bits of the cotton you're doing that to loosen all of it up to be able to get everywhere to clean the cotton in a later step that machine is going to constantly go back and forth and take like thin layers off of the bales of cotton while it's doing that you can already set up your second line of bales and once that's done you're just going to turn it around and then it will continue the little balls of cotton that you see in the second video they are then going to be transported in different channels and pipes by air that is what the blue arrow stands for they're going to be continued to be transported by air in the next couple of steps so just a little heads up but that is your very very first step now once you've loosened up your cotton a little bit the very first thing you want to get out to not break your machines is any metal pieces. There could be metal pieces in there for tons of different reasons, but very, very early on, you have a magnet picking all those out. We already have the cotton fibers and like small little balls of cotton, essentially. And the next step is to clean them. We have two machines to do that. The first one just roughly cleans it. What happens is the cotton falls into the machine. You have like this big metal rod, which has metal spikes going off of it. That is spinning and spinning and spinning. The cotton will get stuck to it. Um, the heavier pieces, such as trash, they will fall off. They will fall through this crate that's at the bottom of the machine because the cotton is bigger and lighter. It will not fall through. It'll continue to turn until the cotton pieces are like small and light enough to be picked up by the upward wind on the back of the machine where the cotton will then be transported into the second machine. And the second machine, there is a more thorough cleaning. So you will now have smaller pieces 
and they will go around three different roads. Those have like little spikes on them, which are a lot finer than in the second uh, in the first machine. They get finer as they go through the machine and they will be scraping against different pieces, essentially being combed. And then all of the trash will be combed out of them. Um, so those weird like um, those weird spiral things in the drawings, that is where the trash is going to end up. And that is going to be like one long thing, the entire width of the machine where all of that trash is collected and then also like sucked out of. And then once again, in the back, you have even smaller cotton pieces and they're transported off by air. The next thing is to get all the fibers somewhat parallel, so oriented in the same direction so we can actually turn them into functional, useful yarn. And for that, we have one machine, which my professor actually wrote his dissertation on, I believe, which is why we talked about it a ton. There is so many details to look into when actually using the machine, but I'm gonna try to explain it as quickly as possible. Essentially, you have one roller transporting the cotton onto a different roller. The second roller takes all of the cotton from roller number one, and it kind of carries it along. All of those rollers have like different spikes on them. And then there will be spikes going into the different direction, just kind of brushing them out. On the top, you have that thing, which is essentially works similar to a roller. It just covers a lot more surface. And it also has a lot more fine spikes. And that one will once again, brush through all of the fibers. On the top side, it will then be cleaned off so it can continue working. And then all of the fibers will be brushed more or less in one direction. And then the last roller will take some of the fibers off of the second roller. It will only take the fibers that are oriented right. And then those are going to be transported into one thick band. Now we have a band, which is about this thick, of parallel cotton fibers. This band is a little thicker in some places, a little thinner in some. Here's how we're gonna fix that. We have a couple of these machines after each other. We're gonna repeat this step several times. We usually don't just do it once. What you do is you take about six, maybe eight of those bands, you mush them together, and then what you need to do, you need to stretch them again to the thickness of one of them. What this will do is you got one, let's say one is a little thicker in that spot, but two to eight, or not, they're kind of normal. So that little thicker spot, then on average, isn't that much thicker anymore. Same with thin spots. So it just kind of evens out the thickness a little bit. The way you're gonna stretch it out is you have three sets of rollers. The top ones have arrows on them because they are actively spinning. The bottom ones, they're only spinning because of pressure. So they're passively spinning. They don't have a motor actually making them turn. The first one is the slowest one. The second one is just a little bit faster. And then the third one is significantly faster. And because that one is so much faster, in that last section is where most of the kind of pulling it apart and making it skinnier actually is happening. So now what we need to do is we need to get it stretched to the diameter we want our yarn to be. And then we also need to spin it, so twist it, to make sure that all those fibers actually stay together because they are just a couple of centimeters long. Now, there is three ways to do this. The most commonly used one is ring spinning. So in ring spinning, what you have is, once again, you have three sets of rollers. You'll have um, the top rollers, which are actively being turned. First one, the slowest. The third one is the fastest. And in between roller number two and three, you will actually be stretching your band a lot smaller. So in ring spinning, you have two steps. First, you'll have your flyer machine, which will make the band about this thick. And then later you'll have the actual rinse, ring spinning machine, which will make it like a tiny thin thread. Does the exact same thing. Those weird triangles on roller number two are there to make sure that the thread actually reaches the roller set three and doesn't just like fall down. And then to get the twist in there, that's what's happening when you put it onto your final spool. That spool is put onto a so-called spindle, which is turning. The spindle is the thing that Sleeping Beauty pricks her hand on. Luckily here, they're not nearly as pointy, and that's how you have your finished spool of thread. The second one, air jet spinning. Now, air jet spinning is essentially what it sounds like. You do it with very fast air. So you'll have your band coming into the bottom of the machine, and it'll be going upwards into this essentially like cone thing, which has a small little tunnel in it. The tunnel will be a lot smaller than where it's coming from, which means that the air is going to be going faster into there. So that's where your yarn is getting skinnier towards the top. And to make sure that it actually gets twisted, um, 
the air will be going kind of diagonally upwards around your cone. And then there will be some fibers that you can see kind of in that sketch that I made. Those fibers will kind of go upward around the outside of that cone. And because of that air, it will just wrap those fibers nicely around the yarn, which is going up into the tunnel. And now we are going to spin it the third way of how to. So what we are trying to create is a thin thread, which is a little twisted to make sure that all of those short fibers don't just fall apart. So we have our cotton, which is gonna go um, once again, past a couple of rollers and being transported by air. And then it will go into this thing called a rotor, which is about, I want to say this big. Um, and it has like a ridge in it where the fibers will, again, through centrifugal force, they will get collected in that ridge and they will turn a little bit. And that is how they create a thread, which will then be pulled out of said ridge. And then it just continually keeps going on. Um, I've never until now been able to fully grasp this concept because i've never been able to see it so i just wanted to tell you about it for full disclosure so you know about all the different methods i cannot explain it any better <laughs> we have been talking about how to turn cotton fibers into yarn there is one final final step that you need to do to be actually be able to sell the yarn that you just made so we currently have after let's say we did ring spinning for our yarn because that's the most popular we have our yarn on this spool which is really not that thick and about this high there's not a lot on there whereas in production for like weaving or knitting you will need a lot bigger spool so what you do is you spool all of that thread onto one bigger one you'll knot the end of a second one to it continue spooling and then you'll have a spool which is about twice the size of this and a lot thicker and those are the ones that you can actually sell and while you're doing that spooling it from that tiny to the big spool if you're going to be selling it to be able to knit it later you will most likely also add wax to it you're going to do that by literally just pulling the thread past like this block of wax to get some wax onto the sides of it that way it's a little less brittle less less likely to tear <laughs> that is it your thread's done you can finally sell your cotton thread and work with it um that is cotton and today i'm going to tell you how to make synthetic fibers which are also called if they are long they're called filaments if you chop them down they are once again staple fibers but here's how it's done you have a couple different processes it depends on which raw material you have which process will work for you but very very basic you put in your plastic for example polyester pellets you put them in on the top you heat them up and mix them nicely to melt them down. Then you push them through. There's a disc with tiny little holes in it. You push them through there. You pull that out at the bottom. Then you'll have like tiny little strings, filaments of your synthetic fiber, of your, you know, synthetic material. You will blow cold air onto that. It'll cool down to make sure they don't stick together in the end. And then you roll them onto a spool. The cross section can be anything you want, more or less. Most of the time, the cross section is round, but you can make the cross section whatever you want to get a different function. So, for example, the bottom one is a little bit closer to the cross section of cotton if you want it to behave shape wise a little bit more like cotton, if you want to mix it with cotton, for example. Um, then you have the second one. The second one here is hollow. What does that mean? If you use the same mass, so the same amount of material, um you will have a bigger cross section it will weigh the same but it'll be stiffer because the cross section like i said is bigger so that could give an effect maybe like linen which is a little stiff which means that the clothes stand off of your body very nicely which makes them feel airy so with that you can create so much function in your clothes and you sadly cannot do that with all natural fibers 